This video was sponsored by ButcherBox. Hey, welcome to another video. Now, for a while, you guys have been asking for a video on how I scribe things. Not how I scribe, as in write, but scribe as in pair cabinets and things like that to a wall that might not be exactly level, square, plumb, even. So I thought, what the heck, I'll do a video on scribing. Now let me preface this with saying, I've just kind of taught myself everything I know about scribing, so there might be better techniques out there that I don't know about. And I'm sure you'll let me know what they are in the comment section, so make sure you do that. But for now, I will teach you everything I know about scribing, some helpful tips, some helpful tricks to make your life a little easier. I'll walk you through some of the various scribing tools that are out there and which ones I like and which ones I don't like. So enjoy the video, check the links in the video description for all the products you're gonna see in this video. And there's a link down there to our Patreon account. If you wanna sign up, get some behind the scenes footage, check that out. With no more further ado, let's subscribe. Oh, subscribe. Let's scribe, but you should also subscribe. So before we talk about how to scribe, let's first define what scribing is so you know what the heck I'm talking about. Now, scribing is kind of a loosely used term. It's one of those things like Kleenex. Kleenex is a brand name, but we just call all tissue now Kleenex, at least. We did in my family growing up. That's beside the point. But scribing, as it's most commonly referred to in woodworking, is where you're trying to pair one piece of wood to match the angle or shape of another piece of wood, usually on an opposite plane. So consider this scrap piece of ply here to be our wall, and this piece of wood here to be our piece of trim or cabinet, face frame, whatever you want to think of it as. And what we're trying to do is pair this piece of wood to match the shape or angle of the wall. Now you can see it's a nice tight fit at the bottom here, but because the wall is slanted back slightly, as we move up the piece, we develop this really big gap, which you don't want when you're installing cabinets. So the act of scribing is to somehow trace the shape of this piece of wood here onto our cabinet or trim piece to match that angle or shape so that those nestle together very nicely like a little pair of Russian dolls or something. So how do we do this? Well, that's where the scribing comes in. Let me show you some different scribing tools that you can use. So there's a ton of different scribing tools on the market. All of them are a little different. All of them seem to claim that they're the best tool out there. To tell you the truth, I never owned a scribing tool until this video. I bought some on Amazon so I could show you some different designs. I would always just make one with random stuff I had laying around my bottom of my tool bag and it seemed to work just fine. So I'm going to show you some of the ones you can buy online and then I'm going to show you how you can make one in two seconds with stuff laying around your shop. It's not that difficult. But here's a few different options. Now you're probably wondering, so how does a scribe generally work? Well, usually it works just like this compass, which lots of people will just use a compass as a scribe. You have a point over here. This point usually is what follows your wall that you're trying to match the shape or angle of. And then you've got a pencil or some sort of marking device on the other side. So basically you drag the pointer along the wall that you want to mimic the shape of, and you drag the pencil simultaneously along your piece, thus scribing a line down your piece that should match up with whatever angle shape you have to cut. So you could just use a compass. That'll work. They sell a bunch of different designs. I got this one on Amazon. I think this is the one I like the best out of all the ones I bought. I wanna say it was maybe $12. The thing I like about this one is that you can adjust it so that it works just like a compass. So it's got the point over here on this side and it's got a marker on this side. But the thing I like about this one is you can also adjust it, hold on, if I can remember how to do it, straight up and down like this. So you have your point sticking out here and your marker on the bottom. And then you can adjust that back and forth to get it really close to that point, which we'll talk about in a second why that's key. But this point drags along your wall and then it simultaneously marks onto your board. Scribing a line. 
There's also this funny looking one that looks like a hand plane. It's got this flat portion on the bottom and a little piece of lead sticking out the end. This one works good because it's got a nice flat bottom, which makes it very easy to keep it tight against your wall. What I don't like about this is the probe or the point that is following your wall. It's big and flat, so it's hard to get detailed work if you're scribing around brick or something like that. And then we have what I typically use, a mechanical pencil. Now this doesn't work all the time because sometimes the gap that you're trying to scribe away from is bigger than the pencil. But you can just use a pencil to scribe by taking that pencil, holding it against your wall that you want to match, and dragging that pencil down the length of your board. But as you can see, when we get to the top, there's too big of a gap, so my pencil is no longer coming in contact with that board. And then there's the other option that I used to do all the time. You can make whatever size scribe you want, and all you need is a carpenter pencil and a drill bit. Let me show you how that works. Now this is probably the most common way that I would make scribes on the job site. All you need is a carpenter's pencil and a little drill bit and obviously a drill. What you're gonna do is you're gonna chuck the drill bit up into your drill, just like that, and you're gonna drill a hole through the side of your carpenter's pencil. Once it's all the way through, you unhook it from your drill and there you go, you have a scribe. Because as we mentioned, a scribe is just a probing point and a marking point. This point rides along your wall while simultaneously marking on the piece that you need to cut. Let me show you how it works. So we have this little scribe that I made with a carpenter's pencil and a drill bit. Now this is our wall and this is the piece that we're trying to match angle shape to that wall. So we're gonna use the tip of the drill bit here as our probe that's gonna ride along the wall we're trying to pair to, and then we're gonna have the marking tip, which is the end of our carpenter's pencil. And the key here is to keep the drill bit pressed firmly against the wall we're trying to pair to, and our marking tip pressed firmly against the piece we're trying to scribe onto. So I'm gonna push the drill bit against my wall, the tip against my piece, and then I'm just gonna drag it down. I like to kinda of go back and forth to get a nice dark line making sure I keep contact with that wall the whole time and just work my way all the way down. Now, if I was to cut this line, this angle perfectly matches the angle of my wall and we have successfully scribed a line that will allow us to cut that and push this now over so that everything is flush and we have a perfect seam. So I was able to do that with my two second scribing tool I made with a pencil and a drill bit. Let's try some of these other scribing tools just to see if they're any easier or harder to use. Same principle, you got the probe, you got the marker. I think I gotta tighten these things down here. Push that against the wall, that against my board and drag a line down. I don't know. I feel like I could have saved the $12 and stuck with my pencil. There's also this doohickey here. Now this one, I think it adjusts out. Yeah, like that, okay. Press that firm against our thing, that against our board, and drag a line down. Now that one works pretty well because you got such a nice big surface to hold against the board you're tracing. The problem is you're not always going to luck out. It's not going to be perfectly flat like this. Sometimes you're going to have texture on it. It's going to be bumpy. Maybe it's brick and there's no way you're going to get all that detail with this thing. So when I look at all these scribes, this would probably be my favorite one, although I don't know if it's necessary. I will include a link to this in the video description. But at the end of the day, I just don't think there's anything wrong with my pencil and drill bit. It works great. Now that we know how scribes work, I want to walk you through a couple different scenarios where you might need to scribe something and different scribing shapes. I'm also going to show you how you should prepare your board before you ever even get to this stage to make scribing a lot easier. And I'm going to show you some different ways that you can cut your scribe line and make it match perfectly to your wall. All right, now we're gonna back up a second. Now that you know the basics of scribing, how it works, a few of the different tools, I'm gonna to teach you some techniques on how you can actually prepare your work to be scribed and make life so much easier. So, you have your board and you want to pair it to a wall. Well, when you're scribing, you're trying to get as close as possible to the actual shape of the wall. 
Now, this can cause a problem if your board is too thick. Let's say you're dealing with three quarter inch material and you're scribing based on the wall right here and transferring that line onto your piece. Well, who's to say that three quarter inches back on that wall, it's a completely different story. Maybe there's some texture back there that's not on the front. Maybe there's some texture on the front that's not on the back. Maybe the walls just slants in at the back. So you really want the line that you see on the front to be the line that you're scribing to. So how do you do this if your board is three quarters of an inch thick? Well, that's simple. You just remove the material on the back like this. There you have it. All I do is I cut a 45 on the back side of my piece. That brings the front piece to a nice crisp point. So when I push this up against my wall, I know that that front line is the only part of my board that is making contact to the wall. This is gonna help you get a much more accurate scribe and fit to the wall that you're pairing it to. Now, if you don't have access to a saw that will cut a 45 degree angle on the back, other things that work is a chamfering bit chalked up in the router, just add a little chamfer. If you can't bring it to a perfect point, that's okay. Any amount of material you can remove on the back to slim down that surface that's coming in contact with your wall is really gonna help. Not only will it help you get a better fit and a better scribe line, it's gonna be a lot easier to cut because you're cutting through much thinner material. Now that we know about preparing our boards, let's talk about some of the different ways and circumstances that you might encounter scribing on the job site. Now there's no way that I can list all the different scribes you're gonna come up against, but I'm gonna give you some of the top things that you're gonna encounter. The first one I like to call the easy scribe. I call it the easy scribe because it's not actually scribing, because you don't use a scribe tool, you don't scribe anything. And let me show you what I mean. That's where you have this situation. What I was showing you before. It's tight at the bottom, it's loose at the top. Now whenever I see this, when I'm trying to install a piece of furniture or cabinet, the first thing I do is get a straight edge and I put it on the wall. What I'm looking for is to see if my wall is perfectly flat. If my wall is flat and there's no curve to it, it's just at an angle, well then you don't really need to scribe it. All you need to do is take your ruler and measure the distance of the gap at the top of your piece, okay? That is right at seven eighths of an inch. So we know this is seven eighths of an inch away from the wall. So then we're gonna come down to the base of our piece and we're gonna make a little mark at seven eighths of an inch, just like that. Now we haven't scribed anything, we're just doing some basic measurements. Then we're gonna take our piece, lay it down, we're gonna put our straight edge on the top corner and we're gonna connect it to that dot, this ruler isn't quite long enough, we're gonna connect it to that dot on the bottom and just draw a line. Now, we didn't actually scribe off of this wall, we just did the math to figure out that that's what we have to remove so that this pairs up perfectly to the wall. That's why I call it the easy scribe. And this happens occasionally. But most of the time, not only is your wall going to be angled, it's also probably gonna have a curve in it because they got a little heavy with the plaster. So if that's the case, we're gonna actually have to scribe it. But let me show you how I cut out the easy scribe. And it's pretty easy. I just use a track saw. All right. Now that I cut this straight line on the track saw, it should perfectly match up to my wall. That's the easy scribe. But what if it's not that easy? What if it's more complicated? Well, don't worry, we're gonna do that one next. This video was sponsored by ButcherBox. ButcherBox is an awesome company. You get high quality meat delivered right to your door at a great price. I just got this box from them. We're gonna open it up and see what we got. Let's start with the best part first. Right now, if you click the link in my description, you get ground beef for life. That's right, new ButcherBox members will receive two pounds of grass-fed ground beef for the lifetime of their membership, plus free shipping. 
And we're not talking mediocre meat, we're talking high quality meat, 100% grass fed and pasture raised beef, free range USDA certified organic chicken, wild caught seafood, salmon, cod, scallops, haddock, and don't forget bacon, which is sourced from humanely raised pork and is uncured, nitrate free, and sugar free. You can get box options and delivery frequencies to fit your needs and cancel anytime with no penalty. I mean, let's be honest, who wouldn't want great tasting, high quality meat you can feel good about, delivered right to your doorstep with free shipping. An awesome box full of awesome meat, just in time for barbecue season. So here's what you're gonna wanna do. Click the link in my video description and you will get ground beef for life. That's right, you heard me correctly. Right now, Butcher Box members will get two pounds of grass fed ground beef for the lifetime of their membership, plus free shipping. That's too good to pass up. That's like hamburgers every day. Now I've created a situation here where the wall is not only angled back, it's got a curve in it. And you can see if I stick this ruler on here, it rocks back and forth because there's a nice bow in the middle. So we can't do the easy scribe because if we trace a line, well, it's still not gonna fit. So this is where you actually have to scribe the wall and transfer that shape onto your piece. Now I've already prepared the piece that I'm gonna be scribing with that 45 degree angle. So we got a nice crisp point. So we're gonna stick that up against our wall like this. And I'm just gonna once again use my little homemade scribe. Now I'm gonna try and just hold this without clamping it. It's a little awkward being behind it, but I'm gonna start at the top here hold it against the wall and my piece and work my way down here, making sure that my drill bit is nice and tight against the wall and my marking point is nice and tight against my piece. Now some other things you wanna note here. You wanna try and keep your scribe pretty level. If you get too wonky, well then your probe point is gonna be down here and your marking point is gonna be up at the top. So you wanna keep those pretty level as you work your way down so you get a more accurate scribe. So as you can see, we now have this line scribed on here and you can kinda of see it's got this nice curve and angle to it. So we obviously can't cut this with the track saw. So let me show you one of the best, easiest ways to cut a scribe line and that is with a jigsaw. So we're gonna cut out this line with a jigsaw. Jigsaw works perfect to cut a nice curved line. There is a problem with the jigsaw though. Normally it's got an upcut blade in here, which means that you can get some tear out along your edge, which we don't want. So you could switch out that blade for a down cut blade, get a nice crisp clean cut, or you could pre-score your line with a razor blade. That'll give you a clean cut as well. But whenever I'm doing scribe lines, what I like to do is just take my jigsaw, flip it around upside down. This way I'm using the normal blade, but now it's a down cut, so I'm getting a crisp edge on the top, and it allows me to just see that blade, so it makes following that line a lot easier. So I'm gonna turn this thing on, cut out this line, and see how it pairs up to our wall. All right, so I just cut this out with the jigsaw. It's got a nice curve to it. And if we put it back on right where I scribed it, it's a pretty close fit. There might be a tiny hairline gap in the middle where I crossed that pencil line just a tad with the jigsaw, but all in all, really good fit, totally acceptable and much better than it was before. But we can get harder than this. So let's take it up a notch. Well, to take things up a notch, I simulated what is supposed to look like brick. I know it's wood, but just imagine it's brick. I'm not gonna say this is the most difficult scribe you're ever gonna encounter on a job site, but it is definitely up there with the difficulty level. So I wanted to show you how I do it because it's actually a two-part process and that's what throws most people off with complex scribes like this is they forget the two-part process, all right? So step one, take your board, Push it up against the wall. I've already got this prepared with my 45 degree angle. 
push it up against the wall you want to pair against. Now, what most people do, and is a big mistake, is they'll go right to try and describe the wall at this point. Match all those bricks onto this piece. That's more difficult than it needs to be because you still have this huge gap at the top. Now remember, the wall might not be square. Maybe it is, maybe you lucked out. If it's not square and you have a huge gap on one end or the other, do the easy scribe first. Take a ruler, measure that distance at the top. We are right at 9 16 Take your board, mark over 9 16 on the bottom, make a little mark, connect those lines, just like, wait for it, this. All right. Cut that line. Get this board as close to the wall as you can first before you start trying to match those bricks. It'll be so much easier. So I'm gonna cut this, then we'll come back and scribe to these bricks. All right, so I just cut that line on the track saw, and now as you can see, it pairs up quite nicely to my wall, no big gap. Now lots of people when they're dealing with brick, they'll just leave it like this and fill each little gap in with caulking but it just doesn't look as good. If you can get it tight against the brick, man, people are gonna look at it and be like, that guy? Yeah, he knew what he was doing. So that's what we wanna do here. I'm gonna try and scribe this with the fancy scribing tool I got on Amazon. Not that I don't think my homemade one won't work, I know it will, I've done it on brick tons of times, but I just really wanna try and see if this is any different. So I'm gonna get this clamped up, I want it nice and firm, and I'm gonna try and scribe along the wall to perfectly match up with all of that brick. Let's see how it goes. dreaded brick scribe. It's really not that hard. If you go slow, you do the steps right, you make sure to just make it easy on yourself. Get that board as close as possible first, then scribe your brick. You're never going to get it exactly, exactly right on brick. The goal is to get it in there close enough that it looks better. It's a smaller gap. If it's painted, well, then you got a way smaller area you have to caulk and you have a nice transition. There's one more scribing trick I want to show you that again doesn't involve any scribing, but we're gonna call it scribing just for the fun of it. Let's do that one. All right, here's one more scribing trick, but as I mentioned, this doesn't involve any actual scribing, but it's pairing one piece of wood against another piece of wood, so we're just gonna go with it. Sometimes you run into kind of these complex shapes. A lot of times when you're dealing with like floor trim around doorways, things like that. This is completely random. It was a scrap piece that was angled with a flat front and I glued this little knob on here just to make it a little more difficult. Let's say you have a piece of wood that you wanna pair around that shape. Now you could scribe this the same way I showed you along the wall, taking a scribe and tracing it out. But there's a larger gap on both sides which can make it a little more difficult with the scribe because you have to stretch that scribe out to reach the piece that you're trying to pair with. So there's a quick, easy way to do this. I like to call it the cheating scribe because you don't actually have to scribe and you have to have no skill whatsoever. And all you need is some playing cards and some CA glue. Let me show you how to do it. Now, although this shape is pretty complex with the angles and the different levels and faces, all of these are straight lines. That's key for this technique. They gotta be straight lines. Then you're gonna need some playing cards. Now. Playing cards work the best because they're nice and thin. You can use pieces of scrap wood, but it gets a little more difficult. Most playing cards are rounded on the corners. I trim these down so they're nice square edges. Now all you're gonna do is use these playing cards to map out all the straight edges on your piece. So I'm gonna lay one down there along my first straight edge. I'm gonna put down a little CA glue, just like that. 
little accelerator spray on the back of the card. And I'm gonna put this other one right in that corner there and let that dry really quick. Then I'm gonna take another card, map out that front straight edge there. So I need a little more CA glue on my playing card, a little more accelerator spray, plop that down on that front straight edge, make sure it's nice and tight to my piece. And I'm just gonna keep working my way around, making sure I'm fitting all of these gaps right where I want them to go. A little more CA glue, a little more accelerator spray. Fit that on there like that. And then one last one to meet that last angle. All right, now I can pull this up and now I have the perfect shape of this piece. So all I have to do is lay it down on my piece of wood, trace that out, cut it, and it should fit perfectly around my complex shape. So here I have my cheater scribe that I used to trace out my shape. I take that off. I cut out my shape. I did this real quick on the bandsaw just to get it done. And as you can see, fits perfectly around my complex shape. I didn't have to scribe. I just glued some cards together and I moved on with my work day. Lots of times if your scribe line isn't that complex and it's pretty close to your edge and you've cut that front edge at a 45, you can just forego the jigsaw and do the entire thing with a power sander. And sometimes you even have more control that way. If you're building something between two walls, so you potentially have to scribe on both sides of the piece, you should always check the walls before you build the piece so you can scribe those pieces first and then build your face frame to fit in between the walls. If you build the piece first, well, once you scribe on one side, it's gonna move the whole thing over and then it's not gonna fit on the other side. So check your walls first, scribe your pieces first, and then build your face frame. If you have to scribe on a finished piece and you're at all worried about messing up your scribe and therefore messing up your finished piece, just scribe a piece of scrap plywood first. Get that piece to fit perfect, then use a router with a flush trim bit. Use your scrap piece as your template to cut that exact same scribe onto your finished piece. That way you can mess up your scrap piece like a hundred times, keep playing with it. Once you get it right, then you have a perfect template. You won't screw up your nicely finished piece of furniture. Hey, hopefully that was helpful. I don't know. That seemed like a lot of just close-up shots of me drawing pencil lines, but maybe it taught you something about scribing. Like I said, that's not everything. Everybody's got a tip or a trick about scribing that they learned from their granddad or their father or whatever. So if you have a helpful tip, make sure to share it in the comment section. Or if you see something that I did that could be done in a completely better, easier way, well, share that too. If you're not signed up for Patreon, there's a link in the video description. You get a ton of behind the scenes footage, live question and answers, so do that. There's also links in the video description to the different scribing tools that I used. That one bendy one, this guy, it's actually pretty cool. So, Amazon, a few bucks. <laughs>